Hey, Dr. Wilson here. I'm a molecular and structural biologist, and me and my dog Toby are back to debunk some more COVID-19 misinformation. This week I'll be debunking someone who has gained a lot of popularity, mostly in Europe, and his name is Dr. Mike Yeadon. And yes, we have another real doctor spreading COVID misinformation. Let's listen to what he has to say. Let's just talk about some really basic stuff here. We saw yesterday 3,991 positive cases for coronavirus. It's up 50% in a week. Um, You can understand why huge numbers of people are incredibly worried that we are seeing that uptick in cases. Should we be worried? Yes, we should be very concerned. A huge spike in cases means that more people are going to be getting sick, more people are going to be getting hospitalized, and yes, more people will be dying. And if we don't do anything about it, then it's only going to get worse as the winter season moves into the holidays. But don't worry, we have Dr. Mike Eden, who I'm sure is going to tell this reporter exactly what I just said, right? So, uh, of course, I definitely don't want to dismiss the possibility uh, that these numbers are real and that people will get ill and potentially go to hospital or even die. So far, so good. But the evidence to date, I think, uh, suggests that all or substantial part of these positives could be due to what's called false positive uh, tests. Well, so much for that. I didn't get my hopes up anyway. The government doesn't either doesn't know what the false positive rate is, or if it does, it's not declaring it and continuing with the assumption that it's zero. And it's definitely not zero. And Carl Hennigan did a calculation and he showed that If the false positive rate is as little as 0.1%, then more than half the positive tests are in fact false or fake. Well, no serious scientist is going to tell you that the false positive rate of a PCR test is zero. There is always a chance for a false positive in any test, and anybody who has done PCR will know that PCR is no different. However, because of how PCR works, which I explained in a previous video, go check that out, False positives when it comes to PCR are going to be extremely rare. And I think the false positive rate is probably much higher, possibly 1%. And if that's true, most or or all of the positives are, are actually false and they're not infected, infectious or ill. Wow, no, it's not even close to all or most. Here is a calculation written by Dr. Stanley Levinson. These calculations use a false positive rate of 0.8%, which was empirically determined by experimentation. Although this 0.8% false positive rate is not final, we can use it in these calculations to show that if 6% of total tests are reporting positive, then about 13% of those positives could be considered false. And if the total percent positive of tests being done decreases, then that false positive rate can increase. But in both situations, these numbers are not anywhere near most or all, as Dr. Yeadon claims. These numbers also fail to account for the false negative rate. False negatives are much more likely to occur than false positives when it comes to this test. So by using this same logic, we would conclude that we are missing thousands and thousands of COVID cases. So because false positives most often occur due to contamination or mishandling of the samples, and false negative rates are much more prevalent, we don't really have to worry a whole lot about false positive rates overall. So no, it is incredibly dishonest to say that most or all of these COVID cases are fake. But Dr. Eden doesn't stop there. He's got more. For those of us who are not medically trained or scientifically trained, or indeed a great mass murder either, it's because the the actual percentage of people who are being tested positive is is a tiny, tiny percentage. So if you have a very a positive uh, a, a false positive rate at that level, you actually are accounting for effectively all of the the positive test results. And this comes down to how they're testing and how they they carry out these cycles to sort of try and sort of uh, get particles of a virus. Again, even if the positive rate is small the false positives are not going to make up most or all of the cases. And yeah, PCR does look for fragments of the genome that belongs to the virus, but it does so in a method that is extremely precise and almost always will only detect the virus if the virus is there. Again, go watch my video on how that works. 
we know that, because it's been shown, that people who've recovered from the virus and they're clinically well, and you can no longer culture virus from a sample from, from their mouth or airways, still can be positive in the PCR test. And that's because, as you say, the test is not a test for virus. It's not a test for living virus. The test looks for a p particular piece of the genetic code. Yes, it does. And it does so in a quantitative way which means that we can use the results of the PCR test to actually calculate how many viral particles are originally in the sample. We can do this by using what we call a CT value that we get from the test. CT stands for cycle threshold. Basically, this means the test will report a positive result in real time, and it will tell you the CT value or number of cycles that it went through in order to obtain that positive result. So a lower CT value means that there is more virus to begin with, and we can use this number to get an idea as to what stage of infection a patient might be in and whether or not they might actually be infectious to others. Not surprisingly, scientists have studied this data, and they have found that not only do most COVID-positive PCR tests fall within a range of CT values that indicate live infectious virus, but that even asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic patients can actually remain infectious for extended periods of time. But we are following behind countries like Spain and France. They've also seen a big uptick in the number of cases, although they're not testing at the same level. Um, and they are now, and we're three weeks ahead behind them, they are now seeing an uptick in people getting into hospital and in terms of deaths. And we are now seeing that uptick in hospitalizations and in deaths. Is that not evidence that we should be worried that we are heading into the so-called second wave? Yeah, no, so it's a fair question. I, I, I will tell you, I'm very humble and very worried that I, if I'm wrong, I would hate to sort of mislead people. But I did check uh, this morning and the number of COVID deaths, at least in NHS England, is continuing to stay low and falling. Well, that's not so true now, is it? Well, maybe if Dr. Yidan is honest that he doesn't want to mislead people, he'll change his tune. You know the story going around at the moment that very many more young people are testing positive in this PTR test. And people have said, oh, well, it must be the young people are, you know, interacting with each other as they do and not obtaining, uh, looking at social distancing. Well, that's possible. But, you know, I always felt that was implausible because young people felt rightly less at risk from this virus from the get-go. And as my children in their 20s have said, you know what, Dad, young people have not been spending as much time social distancing. So what I'm saying is they would have caught it, they would have been the first people to have caught it and survived. So the idea that now, six months later, the young people are selectively getting it, I just think that's for the birds. Well, first of all, birds are not real. Second of all, this idea is also not real. You don't think that the increased rate of COVID in younger people might have something to do with universities going back into session? Maybe? We're being told the answer to coming out of this uh, this predicament we're in and, and avoiding a second lockdown across the country or curfews and the like, saving Christmas, the Prime Minister has said in an interview with The Sun. The answer is more testing. No, the answer is to stop thinking that one thing is going to solve this problem. We need more testing, yes, but we also need to wear masks. We also need to wash our hands and be conscious of our hygiene. We also need to be conscious of social distancing. We also need to keep our places well ventilated. We also need to have lockdowns when necessary. All of these measures and more are necessary to solving this problem. Stop expecting one silver bullet to solve everything. It's not going to work that way. But if we've got testing that is showing up so many false positives and people who are not infectious, who are not at risk, the risk, of course, is that more testing creates more cases, creates more worry, is more likely to lead us to have a curfew and, and lockdown, in which case... Yes. Throughout this interview, this reporter keeps hinting at this idea that more testing means more cases. And that's simply not true. Testing has always been going up, even in the UK, but cases were not always going up. Testing helps us know who has the virus and where the virus has been, 
and it is reliable a vast majority of the time. We need to do it, and to say otherwise is to abandon one of our most useful tools in a battle against a deadly virus. You, uh, some advisors have issued to you uh, guidance to retest the positives before declaring them. Are you doing that? That would be that would, we'd all be more satisfied if they're genuinely infected and really got the virus. Most of the time, they'll test positive again. Yeah, I agree with that, and most guidelines will agree with that as well. If you get a positive test, try to get a follow-up test. If you can't get a follow-up PCR test, try to get a cheap antigen test from a reliable source. If you can't do either of those things, it is best to follow your area's guidelines and be on the safe side. If we have uh, a second lockdown, I think we're going to amplify the negative effects. Forget the economy, it's very important. Forget the economy. If we have another lockdown, I think we're going to amplify the non-COVID deaths that I think uh, have happened already, and we're not much talking about them. It's as if there's no other health condition in the country worth paying attention to. That's a valid concern, and it is something doctors are talking about. But the reality is that whether it's a lockdown or rampant spread of the virus, this problem is going to exist. If our healthcare system is overwhelmed with sick people who have this virus, then other people who need help for other diseases are also going to get neglected. It's kind of a lose-lose situation. So it's either the short-term lockdown and get the virus under control, or deal with widespread cases for an extended amount of time. Pick your poison. Well, I think that's going to do it for this debunk of Dr. Mike Eden. It truly amazes me that he would go as far as claiming that most COVID positive results are fake in order to say that this pandemic is over. Shameful, honestly. As always, thank you for watching, and all of the information that I talked about today are linked in the description below. Please do check those out because this video is not the whole story. And if you liked it, don't forget to subscribe so that you can catch me next week, where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.